Hey everybody and welcome to the season finale of Brad Carroll's Game Day. We're going to talk about the biggest game of them all, the BCS National Championship, a little bit later in the show. But first, we got our own season race, title race on the line right here at Game Day. Currently, I'm in the lead, of course. One game lead over the Evil One, Craig Carroll. Joe Fortunato over here. Do you even register on the scale in this thing? Well, no, but that's because you guys have picked a lot more games than I have. You've also you, you picked a lot less games. But you still four games under 500 in the ones that you did pick, including the 89 bowl record. Which means that on the next two games you're going to pick today, I can become one game over 500. One game over 500, guess what? I'm 18 games over 500 for the season. The Evil One's 16 games over. We're going to find out in the next two picks who wins the national championship of Game Day. <laughs> Get to the main event, the BCS National Championship on Monday night. Let's start off Friday night as the Cotton Bowl comes to your TVs. Prime time on Fox. Arkansas taking on Kansas State. Two great offenses in this game. Two teams, by the way, who could easily be playing in a BCS bowl game. Both want to prove that they belong in one of those big time games, possibly next year. This is another pairing of teams that really could have been in the national championship game if things broke their way. They both had pretty spectacular seasons, and now they're coming together in a pretty big matchup to prove that not only did we belong to be here in the Cotton Bowl, we deserve to be in the BCS national championship game as well. Yeah, Arkansas, they only lost two games this season. Oh, by the way, LSU and Alabama were the teams they lost to. They're both playing in the championship game. Kansas State, not so bad either. Their two losses, Oklahoma and Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, again, two very good teams. So this game can go either way. Yeah, you mentioned it before. It's a game of explosive offenses and two kind of different types of offenses. Arkansas loves to throw the football. They're throwing for over 300 yards a game. Not as good of a running team. Kansas State, they're a very good running team. They could run for almost 200 yards a game. Not a great passing team. It'll be interesting to see how their respective defenses attack the other side of the ball. It seems like all the bowl games this year, it comes down to defense. Can you make a stop? This could be another one. We've seen a lot of great offensive shows. What do you got for this one? Well, I think Colin Klein is going to be the difference in this one just because he leads the team in rushing yards and he leads the team in passing yards for Kansas State. That's why I have Kansas State winning this one 28-24. to Yeah, Arkansas, they're minus 8 in this game. I got them winning 41-31. You know, sometimes we get a toot our own horn here over at game day, and in our first two bowl special editions, we said these games, these first two bowl weeks, were going to feature a whole lot of offense. Guess what? They did. Yeah, if you're talking about just offense, you can look at the Alamo Bowl with Baylor and Washington just playing no defense whatsoever and doing everything they could to get into the end zone. If you're looking for great overall games with some offensive production, look no further than the Fiesta Bowl featuring two of college's best quarterbacks in Braden Whedon and Andrew Luck. It was a fantastic bowl season. Yeah, you can't really get much better. A lot of overtime games. The Rose Bowl, wow. Can you get any faster than Oregon's players are? I don't think so. A lot of great games, but I'm going to ask you, which one was your favorite? My favorite game was probably the Fiesta Bowl, just because it had everything in it. It had overtime, it had missed field goals, it had late game pressure, and it featured two great quarterbacks that honestly played up to the stage that the Fiesta Bowl put together. At the end of the day, if Oklahoma State wasn't going to make it to the national championship game, playing Stanford in the Fiesta Bowl was a close second, and it was a fantastic game. Yeah, you know I like the Sugar Bowl with Michigan beating Virginia Tech. But for the best bowl game, it's a toss-up between the Rose Bowl and the Fiesta. I think I'm going to have to go your way as well. Oklahoma State, they really needed this game to validate the season. They beat a very good Stanford team led by Andrew Luck. Great game overall, and I don't think you can get better than the Fiesta Bowl. No, I really don't think you can. <laughs> the college football scene is finally coming to a close, and it's been an overall solid year for the evil one. But if I fail to overtake Brad for the season title, it will be a bitter disappointment. As for the full games so far this season, they have been pretty explosive, and two games come to mind that mass explosiveness play for play. Oklahoma State against Stanford, which saw the game end at 41-38 in overtime, and for my top bowl game, Baylor, who trailed at 1.42-24, came roaring back to beat Washington in one of the best offensive showcases ever, 67-56 in the Alamo Bowl. Here's something the two idiot hosts can discuss after the fire goes away. The raging debate between Andrew Luck and Peyton Manning. To me, it's pretty obvious the Colts can't pass on Luck, so with that, the Colts should release or trade Manning and start Luck right away just like they did with Peyton 14 years ago. 
keep Manning at 28 million and then pay top pick money for luck would be a terrible decision for the new GM to make. Wow, well, he picked the Alamo Bowl, but he also threw us an interesting question. Andrew Luck, Peyton Manning, that's what the Colts are going to have to decide. Where do you think they go? Well, I think from some of the things that he said, the first thing is Indianapolis is not releasing Peyton Manning no matter what happens, no matter who they draft. They're definitely going to trade him, even with the injury. He has a lot of trade value right now. But the question is very interesting because a lot of analysts believe that Andrew Luck is NFL ready right now to step in and take a starting role with an NFL team. Indianapolis can't get much worse than they were this year. What's the worst thing that can happen? And Peyton Manning, he would bring in a pretty much a king's ransom right now, too. Absolutely. Peyton Manning's going to make $28 million, as the evil one said. And like he said, you're going to pay top dollar to Andrew Luck. Can you put up that much of the salary cap in one position? That's almost that's a, a tough decision for the Colts, who are going to be starting over in the front office. They just fired the Polians. So everything is going to come out about here. Andrew Luck talked after the Fiesta Bowl, made it sound like he wanted to play right away, even if, even if Peyton Manning is on the team. So this is going to be a very interesting dynamic. I don't think he'll pull what Eli Manning did, where he said he absolutely was not going to play for the Chargers. He wanted to play for the Giants. I don't think Andrew Luck will do that. But what decision the Colts make is going to be very interesting here. And here's another thing that you need to factor into this equation, and that's the Peyton Manning effect. He has done so much for this franchise, are you really just going to cut him loose simply because you have the first overall pick and you're taking a premier quarterback? Why not have Andrew Luck sit maybe on the bench and learn a little bit? Peyton Manning has done a lot. He won a ring with the Indianapolis Colts. He really brought them to the forefront of the NFL. Are you just going to let that guy go? Because we've seen this year, it was all Peyton Manning. They're the same team they were last year. Two wins this year. What happened? No Peyton Manning. True, but they never found a capable backup. They didn't have the offensive pieces that they thought they had. This team should not fall apart if Peyton Manning goes away. I'm, I'm tired of hearing everybody say Peyton Manning is the MVP of the league. No, absolutely not. If you can't survive, and if your entire offense is based on one player, that team is that's a terrible team. I don't want to hear it. Now, Peyton Manning is making a lot of money. They probably won't release him. They could, because they could just, teams might see that he has no value. Maybe he's injured. Maybe he's not healthy. We haven't talked about that yet. His neck might not be ready to play next season. There could be a lot of trade partners going forward. The Colts have a lot of options, but do you see him with the Colts next year? I don't think so for the reasons that we've outlined right now. I think that there are certainly going to be trade partners out there. Look, you can't tell me right now that if Peyton Manning is on the block, injured or not, a team like the Miami Dolphins is not going to throw everything they have for him. When a team is that desperate, especially for a franchise quarterback like Peyton Manning is, I know he's older, but he's still Peyton Manning, you do what you have to do to get him, and I think there will certainly be teams out there who will put in, and the Colts will be able to move forward with trade pieces from the Peyton Manning deal. One thing we know for sure, Andrew Luck is going to be picked number one. Finally, the main event, the BCS National Championship, number one LSU. Fans, take it all in now, because this is the last time you will hear from the evil one for quite some time. But on the bright side, we all don't have to talk or listen to Tweedledum and Tweedledee anymore, so that should make everyone feel a whole lot better. On to my pick, Kansas State plus 8, in the BCS National Championship game number 1 LSU versus number 2 Alabama. For the second time, Alabama is the ridiculous favorite in this game. Yeah, I can't believe it either. Let's all face it, Alabama didn't deserve to get this second shot at LSU, but it is what it is. To me, LSU is the better team, but Nick Saban is a much better coach than Les Miles, and with this much time to prepare, the advantage slips a little bit in Bama's favor. I expect the same boring type of game, but this time Alabama comes out on top 12 to 10. Well, I didn't expect the evil one to make another entrance here. Grandiose as ever, I, I might say. He's getting a little aggressive. I think, he's, <laughs> I think he's stepping over the line a bit here to come in a second time, but I am actually a little bit surprised that he took Alabama in this matchup, especially because he doesn't think they belong to be in the game in the first place. But, you know, I know that there is some maybe discontent with Les Miles here on this show, but I will say that Les Miles has really proven himself as a coach this year. You can't tell me that there, there are a lot of games on this schedule that LSU could have lost. And Les Miles really led this team through some dangerous waters this year, including the first Alabama victory. I think he deserves to be here, obviously, and I think he's really proving that he is one of the premier coaches in the country. I have to agree with you. You know, I, I've been a Les Miles killer this entire show. But he's proved me wrong this year. The LSU team has proved me wrong as well. They're a very good team. The best team in the nation, I think, bar none. Alabama, very good as well. They lost that game at home. This is the rematch. It could go either way. You know, Craig said it. 
that they are the favorite. Again, it's a li it is a little surprising to me as well. Just one point, but this game obviously can go either way. Yeah, the scary part about this is the two teams have such dangerous defenses. Alabama is allowing 8.8 .8 points a game. LSU is allowing 10.5 they can put up points, but against each other they can't because the defenses kind of make everything else a wash. I really think the difference in this game is going to be the special teams game because that's really the only place you can make any separation. Tyron Matthew, the best returner in the country in my opinion, he was a Heisman nominee because of what he did this year. I think he's going to put LSU in better field position to let that offense get past the Alabama defense to maybe put up a couple of points. Will any touchdowns be scored? Who knows? <laughs> Matthew. Great defensive player, but you mentioned he's an even better special teams player. Absolutely right, Joe. He could put the team in great field position, make that offense go the short distance, score against Alabama. They did score a touchdown in the first meeting. You said maybe. I think they will score a touchdown here. What is your final score? I'm going to have to say that LSU wins the rematch once again, although it's going to be a very close game. I have them winning it 21-20. to This is going to be an absolutely tight game either field goal either way i see a field goal at the end winning it for lsu they win it 17 to 14 they win the national championship no doubt about it no split championship here lsu is the pick well that's it for season two here of brad carroll's game day for evan macy behind the camera he's done a great job all year joe fortunato great job filling in for the retired anthony della calci the evil one he's aggressive he makes the show fun. Thank you very much, Craig Carroll. For everybody, I'm Brad Carroll. We'll see you guys next year.